Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah rabbil alamin. Assalatu wassalamu ala rasulihi al-amin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Rabbi shahli sadri wa yassir li amri wa hlul luqdatan min lasani yafdabu qawli. Wa adhubi wa az assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Today, inshallah, we will be learning about Juz 25, inshallah, Ashura we have. Uh, the surah is almost talking about the traits of movement, how are we supposed to live in this particular society and so on. May Allah help us to understand this in a better way and implement that in our lives, inshallah. Do include me in your prayers and also in your Laylatul Qadr during your Qiyamul Layl and all your duas, inshallah. We have Ashura and number 13. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. شرع لكم من الدين ما وصى به نوح والذين أوحينا إليك وما وصينا به إبراهيم وموسى وعيسى أن أقيموا الدين ولا تتفرقوا فيه كبر على المشركين ما تدعوهم إليه الله يجتبي إليه من يشاء ويهدي إليه من ينيب. so Allah says in this particular ayah, Allah is trying to mention that He has ordained the same rules or the same deen as that of the former prophets like Isa, Musa, Ibrahim and so many other prophets, whoever had come here. Because from the beginning, Allah has introduced the same deen. Deen has never changed. All the fundamental rules are the same. Okay, but only few few things about the Sharia based on the circumstances it has changed okay only only the the variation that we we are able to find is only on Sharia and not about the Deen the Deen will never change why Allah is mentioning about Ibrahim alayhi salam, Musa alayhi salam, or Isa alayhi salam, here. let us try to ponder into that Allah wants to bring a kind of similarities or he wants to bring rapport with the Makkah Mushriks and that's why he is telling that Makkah Mushriks he knew very well, Allah knew very well that Makkah Mushriks believed in Ibrahim okay since they consider him to be as their forefather they had believed in Ibrahim and his religion that he brought that he brought and introduced so the same thing even Musa is introduced to address the Jews because they believed in Musa salam. at the same time Isa salam, was believed by the Christians so in order to build rapport in order to make them understand that these common people these uh, people who have uh, you know Isa salam, Musa salam, and Ibrahim salam, all of them had one common thing that is Islam in their hand all of them brought and introduced Islam to the people. Now Allah wanted to make it very clear that what whatever Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is bringing here, He is bringing forth all these and introducing so many other things to you. It's nothing new. It was during the time of Ibrahim and other prophets as well. So the hour could be easier in this terms. Okay. So when we when we think of this present scenario also, we are able to tell the same thing to people. Now. There are people who are considering that you know uh, this particular religion, Islam, is a religion that was founded by by Prophet Sallallahu But we can easily try to tell them that these things were told not just by Prophet; it was even before that, even before Prophet Sallallahu birth. Ibrahim Alayhislam, Isa Alayhislam, Musa Alayhislam all told the same thing, and we believe them equally. And then Allah says about Aqimuddin, that is establishing deen or what is exactly establishing the deen. Deen is nothing but establishing deen means uh, the religion has to be very deeply rooted. And once it is root, rooted very deeply, what happens is it becomes apparent or it becomes visible or it becomes prominent from outside. And that's how we are able to establish our religion in the, in the sense we are able to maintain that level in such a way that no one can deviate from the deen or the actual deen. So this is very much important for all the believers to understand what exactly is establishing the deen. Following 
all that what Allah and His Rasul is mentioning, and also avoiding all that what they are abstaining from us or expecting us to abstain. These things are to be very much noted. Now we may say that you know people uh, people feel that how can we establish Deen because we don't have any authority. We are not. We don't have any power. But let me make it a point. Here we can't sit and blame the government or blame the ulama. Ulama should do this work and not me. I cannot do it. How can I establish Deen? No. It starts with the self. How can I establish Deen in my body or in my with my soul? Or how can I contribute myself to the society? That's where the challenges begin. Okay, and from there it is extended to our family members. Like we have to be consciously aware of what is happening in my family, whether I am establishing my being in my family, what is happening to my wife, what or my husband, or you know the spouse, and what is happening in the lives of my children, what is happening in the lives of my parents, and also my in-laws. These qualities are to be built by a common man. We cannot expect all these things to be done by the government. Of course, government cannot do it. Okay, and we don't have Islamic government as well. Even if we have Islamic government, we cannot expect all those things from a government to do. Rather, it is our duty to maintain and see to it that our our deen is established at home, in my own life and my life, the life of my own family members. So this is very important. Now. Dawa or islah doesn't have any excuse. Okay, now Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has given some excuse for those people who cannot fast. For example, if I want to say those who, those who cannot fast, maybe you are on a journey or you are sick, you can you can skip your fast and you can at least postpone it. Okay, so at the same time, if that also is not able to, do, you are not able to do that. Even you can pay some ransom and just release yourself from this particular uh, obligation. But at the same time, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has not given any excuse for prayers. Okay, even if you are sick, whatever happens, at least with your eye action, you know the least thing that you can do is through actions you need to pray. That's what Allah says. And now. Even the same scenario is, we have to understand that for a dawa also, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has not given any excuse. So here, how can we understand this? How is that it can? How can we make out that dawa has no excuse at all? It's because when Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was in Taif and he was brutally attacked by the people there in Taif. And we know what has happened. It was his his legs were bleeding profusely, and it was so bad. The condition was so bad. He was not able to walk, and he was crawling. Okay. So at that particular point of time, when the angels came and asked Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, "Shall we? Do you have? Do you permit us to crush these people within the two mountains?" Allah, so uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, "They may." They may turn out to be believers in the upcoming years, inshallah. So I don't want them to do. I don't want you to do anything for these people. Now Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala could have given him excuse. Okay, no problem. Now you can stop your dawa. You have got this. You know your hair, your legs are bleeding or your body is aching. Now you may not go for it. No, these excuses could have been given. But none of the instances we have in the hadith where Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was stopped from his dawa. In fact, he was given more and more responsibility of going and preaching about or spreading the message of Deen to people at that particular time. Now, Allah would have told, "Okay, first you get yourself trained, and then only you can go and uh, uh, have your dawa." But no. There also, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala did not give them give him any kind of excuse. So this it it is proved that you know, dawa has no islah also and dawa also has no excuse. We need to continuously keep correcting people and this is how we need to establish our deen. This is very important in the present scenario because most of us they most of us we skip ourselves 
saying that dawa is not my work i am not a trained dai i don't know how to how to spread this message to people that's why i don't do it now this is totally we are trying to skip from uh, this uh, obligations that we have so inshallah let us be mindful about it and then very important allah the, uh, the important concept that he is telling in the same ayah is about wala tatafarraqu fi do not do not deviate or do not disperse do not divide amongst yourself in his deen now what does this mean we have actually 1.8 billion you know total population we have or we would say 24% of total population but still muslims are being prosecuted we are all the time being tortured or targeted you know most of the time why is that why is that people are trying to attack only the muslims the main thing is we are not following the deen at as it should have been followed the very first reason the second thing is we have no unity no all the five fingers form a fist and this becomes very powerful actually so it it becomes so powerful you know with full strength we are able to do any kind of work but unfortunately nowadays we are following allah and his rasul but there's no unity we fight against each other and losing all that strength eventually now we can see that there is no you know the 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 power is very less the strength is very less for muslims because we are easily being attacked or we are easily being targeted allah says hold the hold the rope of allah tightly it is nothing but the deen he is mentioning hold the rope in the sense we have to be mindful about our own approaches when it comes to our deen what happens is now in in the name of ideologies or maybe in the name of different schools of thought we are getting deviated in the name of sunnis or salafis and uh, you know jamaat e islami hind and many other organizations based on all these things we have been completely getting deviated from our positions this is actually not ideal for a muslim to do it i i highly recommend personally that we need to have at least one one particular reason for what we are here and that is the ibadat of allah that is we are all the abd of allah we know that we are all the slaves of allah and we have one common reason for being in this world and that is ibadat allah's worship when we worship allah it's not just about the prayers that we are talking about there are so many other social social uh, obligations that we need to do and one commonality one commonality can bring us very close to each other now what has happened during the time of covid if you if you realize it was during that time that people had all assembled and joined together and walked and they they just uh, worked for a common reason that is to feed and help the destitutes or who are really in need and we could find that almost all the houses were filled with all kinds of all those deeds all those needs were fulfilled by these people all have come together and worked for a common cause but unfortunately this was confined only for maybe one or two months that's it allah had given a chance for us to reunite but again we are deviated we are dispersed now this division is we will have to pay a lot of lot of price for all these things what we are doing right now we need to understand that this is an alarming state because allah says again in surah maryam also he has been mentioning that allah bestows love between the souls one who is bringing unity and also each and every muslim is a brother so it's like you know in surah uh, saf allah says you know it's like bunyan and marsusa it's a strong concrete like a solid wall muslims should have been like that but now our family our bonds all have started you know we are blaming each other or we are criticizing each other and we think that only i am or only we are the best or we are the people who are going to people who are going to the heaven and others are all in the hell now we love these kind of thoughts we need to change this thought process this cannot happen there may be one reason that allah may be satisfied with them and 
they may be you know elevated to the position much higher than us also sometimes that's what allah says do not mock at people do not ridicule at people because they may be better than you allah says in the quran so we cannot we cannot say that i am perfect and he is not because you try to be perfect but you cannot say that the person on the other end is wrong or he will be always in the hell only no now we love we cannot say that now let us let us come to a common purpose to work for something that we all have to and let us be united islam is highly recommended you know ijtima reunite and try to be very close to each other prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam once told that the muslims will be attacked or there will be a time where muslims will be attacked in large numbers so sahabas were they were very much shocked and they said they just asked Ah, will Muslims be less in number at that time? The Prophet said, "No. There are two main reasons why Muslims will be attacked. That is because of wahin. That is one thing is the the fear of death and the pleasure of the world. These two things will cause them lot of trouble. And now we are facing the same issue. We know what is happening. Actually, I see. I see. There are differences in the opinions, and that's very common." because each one is unique each one has different backgrounds and each one has come from i mean their upbringing is different that's why of course differences of opinion will be there because each one has their own perception now the difference in the opinion cannot mislead us and divide amongst us it was a time even when prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam during those times also especially i would say umar radhiyallahu anhu and abu bakr siddiq radhiyallahu anhu always most of the time they had differences in their opinions even during the time of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam's demise during the death of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam there was difference of opinion between umar radhiyallahu anhu and abu bakr siddiq radhiyallahu anhu but then can we find a single instance where they fought with each other or they got divided no nothing like that now during the time of ahzab prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam had or had ordered people that you will go and reach to that particular place and until then you will not stop anywhere okay so that was a commandment that was a command that was given by prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and there were there was a group of people who stopped at one place they said maybe a prophet has told us not to stop but now this is a time for us a prayer we will offer us a prayer and then move ahead but the other there was another group they said prophet's opinion was we will not stop here anymore so we are not going to stop and then after the battle of azab both the groups came together and they asked who is right amongst us who is right whatever we did like uh, did we did we do a mistake did we commit a mistake while we stopped and started praying or is it their mistake who didn't listen to you and they just went and uh, you know stopped only after they reached the destination they didn't offer their us a prayer so which one do you think is right which group amongst us was right prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said both of you were right both were right because each one had your own perceptions you had your own intentions and you wanted rewards that's it both of you wanted reward and both of you have done good something good i mean you didn't deviate yourself it's all right now this is something you know we have to understand the reasons for getting united rather than searching for the reasons to get divided let us let us consider all these points and make it a point that we come to common terms and you know have common understanding between each other and shall next i have to talk about ayah number 30 wama asabakum min musibatin fa bima kasabat aydikum wa yaqfu an kathira that is all that whatever misfortune that has befallen you to you is the consequence of your own deeds but much of it allah is forgiving now here allah is mentioning about the famine that was struck uh, in makkah during the time of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and allah is trying to mention that don't don't try to blame allah for all these things most of us have this you know we we, we tend to ask allah in such a way that what have we done why do you think 
we are we are getting all these kind of trouble why famine or why earthquakes and why these kinds of uh, trauma you know you are giving to people or pandemic during the time of pandemic i had few clients who used to come and ask the same thing i have done all the good things but why is that the pandemic has struck me so much so badly i'm really affected by this now what happens is although we don't intentionally try to blame allah but we our words express that our words express in such a way that we are blaming allah so allah wants to tell us that don't blame me for all that it is your own deeds or actions that you have taken this is because of your own deeds you are going to face the consequence you were the ones who were trying to go behind dunya you were the ones who prioritized dunya for akhirah and you know if you have got that you you wanted dunya i have given you now face it you are the one who were longing for it now take it take all that what dunya has now dunya also it doesn't have only the good things it also has some challenges also now you have to face that as well now allah is going to give you everything which is in the dunya so if you were if you were to prioritize akhira over dunya you would have got the same thing but we have not done it that is the main reason so misfortune any kind of misfortune that we get it could be famine or it could be earthquakes or it may be floods that has happened recently in india also and earthquakes now uh, in some parts of delhi even peru there are so many other places where you know syria turkey you know these things we we are able to see all of these right so we can assume that it may be there may be some kind of challenges that these people had maybe unknowingly they might have done something and that is the reason this misfortune is there again allah says in ayah number 37 that is there are some people والذين يجتنبون كبائر الاثم والفواحش واذا ما غضبوا هم يغفرون الله says those people who are staying away from the grievous sins and some shameful deeds and whenever they are angry they try to forgive people now who are these again the traits of a mu'min allah is trying to mention here these are the people who never get into any kinds of grievous sins they don't want to do any kind of sins at least you know they are staying away from all kinds of shameful deeds whatever they they know they feel that this is pricking my heart and is saying no i cannot do it because this is something wrong they will not approach they are not wrathful also they are not even revengeful mostly they are forbearing and also they are trying to forgive by nature now this is very important for us to understand that whenever it's it's okay to get angry because angry is also an emotion just like how we feel happy emotions are emotions related to anger is also very common but how to manage anger this is something very important for us to know so recently we had a session for parents based on how to manage the anger there most of them most of the parents were having common problem that is how can i be calm when kids show tantrums so when i told them about when i told them that simple things that you need to change your language and what are the things that you need to journal down and try to bring some some changes within yourself and your your thoughts the very moment they try to change that alhamdulillah Three to four of them were able to get the results very quickly. I would say instant results they were getting, and they shared that in the group which, uh, with me when when they told about all these things. I felt, Alhamdulillah, there are people who are working on all these things and they are getting results out of it. So it is very important for us to learn about these anger management and how to go about it. How to how to get rid of i mean i don't say you have to control your anger because controlling anger is more dangerous than managing anger now managing is something that we all have to understand and bear in mind managing anger is not, is nothing but not getting angry at all so this is very important for all of us and i know it is not that easy but it's 
not neither impossible okay so one of the best characteristics or one of the best qualities of a man is to manage the anger and try to be temperate and cool cool minded also i would say okay this is very important and next allah says they are the ones whenever they do something wrong they seek its redress or they try to change themselves they try to be very humble and you no know, humbly and meekly they are like you know sometimes they become like hermits very humble in nature so whatever happens their tender heart is always try to forgive others or even if they do something wrong they are trying to seek forgiveness from others okay they don't have any kind of uh, revengeful acts or they don't they don't avenge for their um, you know fathers mistakes they try to forgive people these are victors actually i would say these turn out to be victorious but i don't see that when person with authority is trying to misuse these people or trying to sub trying to be very harsh on these people they have to again you know subdue and try to be submissive no cannot happen we have to fight against it at, with all the might and power inshallah so we have to get united against all these powers or uh, the negative powers i would say so if we have such people who are trying to misuse or try to show their authority on people and uh, making uh, the making the life miserable then we cannot subs- we cannot subside or we cannot stand um, so we cannot withstand them of course right so this is very important for us to understand so in general allah is trying to mention here if someone is maintaining peace and order for the sake of allah allah will surely reward them and when you retaliate and when you defend for the right purpose allah is again going to help you and when it comes to arguments you know trying to simply argue being very stubborn this is not going to help us in any ways so let us be mindful about it fight against the evil and be patient and also try to manage our anger and our emotions in a better way so that we can have better living and we become the true representatives of islam inshallah may allah guide us and help us wa akhir da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah